the prime minister has a special interest, if the prime minister is partisan, then it can equally be said that the leader of the opposition will also be partisan. He is also representing a political party, he or she. So there will be motivated, biased action by the leader of the opposition as well. So then is it being said that the prime minister will be biased, the leader of the opposition will be biased, and then the chief justice of India will intervene between two biased parties. Uh, no, Arnav, I don't think that's what the court is intending. Maybe I don't agree with the Louder. way the expression has been put. Because what I would say is that on one hand, you have two people, uh, two parties or two uh, views. So the best, you know, the best talent will emerge the moment you have two people or two organizations which will make sure that they will uh, get uh, very talented, very exceptional people into, uh, into the uh, list or the panel of the person to be considered for the chief uh, election commissioner. And with the chief justice coming in, all that it's saying is just like with regard to the CVC or for other bodies where you want complete independence, you want no, we don't want a independence panel for other bodies. Let me ask you, Gita. Sorry to intervene, but are you saying that other tribunals you don't want other administrative tribunals you don't want competence and independence? If we are making an assumption here and just taking this forward with Amitabh Sinha, that if the assumption is that anyone appointed by the democratically elected government of India is not necessarily talented or independent or competent, then let us extend this to all administrative tribunals also. Because, uh, you know, if the judiciary will assume the powers to run and set up administrative tribunals under 323A, and then insert in the procedure to run these tribunals which are empowered to evaluate complaints regarding recruitment and conditions of service of persons appointed to public service in connection with the union's affairs. These are also important things. Then by this logic, tomorrow district magistrates, collectors also have quasi-judicial powers in this country. District magistrates and collectors have quasi-judicial powers in this country. And then, by this logic, then, you know, uh, UPSC members also, I mean, everywhere we can have a similar procedure. In that case, uh, will it not declare to some extent redundant the entire process of an election and electing a government itself? Why elect a government? You see, you don't need a government then. You need, you need the people representing different political points of view with the, uh, in the appointment of these critical positions. So, Amitabh, we are, this is a, there are various aspects of this we now need to discuss. Thank you, Anna. Uh, let me congratulate you first uh, for be becoming, you know, the first person in the entire media. I am I'm on so many, uh, you know, um, channels right from the evening. But I have uh, come across for the first time that the anchor is trying to be a little more fearless uh, against against what exactly is right and what exactly is wrong. Speaking truth. So uh, let me congratulate you, number one. Number two, let me uh, come to that point which you have asked. See, see, in, in Indian constitution, the framers and the fathers of Indian constitution, they have a very clear uh, idea about what should be uh, the Indian uh, democracy should be. And if anybody didn't uh, think or any or any of the uh, you know my member of the constitution assembly they didn't think about this situation so so this is very clear that the founders of the indian constitution they thought that the balance of power should be uh, you know sacrosanct and and both, all three segments of uh, this indian constitution or three pillars of the indian constitution they, they will respect each other's uh, you know sacrosanct uh, sacrosanct situation and uh, and uh, you know special positions but now I, I will give you one example why after 1989 the entire executive collapsed and the weak government started functioning in the government 
in 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 the in the executive so judiciary took the position of that vacuum and then they started doing the you know, uh, judicial activism now that judicial activism become a judicial overreach so my point is that now since the system is now uh, uh, at this juncture it, it, it's uh, really uh, you know like confident and and uh, having people's mandate in general they they should uh, and they are thinking in a different manner and the, this this uh, you know like uh, a one uh, you can say uh, arnab that uh, this uh, direct confrontation sort of situation has have started taking place and this is a clear example glaring example to, uh, today's uh, judgment is why i am telling you in in the supreme court i am mean, sorry so the constitution uh, so many articles are very clear 121 1 uh, 123 1 2 211 all these sex, uh, articles are very clear about the separation of power so in executive if if the uh, cec uh, has been uh, you know in the precedence in the customary law also and the constitutional law so if the cec is being appointed by the uh, uh, so uh, president of the india and and if any uh, doubt is being raised about the process the doubts are being raised about the supreme court of india also you know in the past uh, very recent past the impeachment was uh, you know initiated against the chief justice of india by a political party Correct. so what uh, we should assume uh, that that supreme court of india and the chief justice they should they should be you know completely uh, removed and some yeah. other process should be uh, there to appoint the chief justice and the justice of india in njac matter also supreme court didn't uh, rely upon that uh, transparency issue now they are saying and i the most important uh, are now i just want one more minute see his observations are with all due respect to supreme court my point is very clear his observations are two important observations number one he said that we want you know tn session type of uh, election commissioner so it means he has directly you know given the verdict or, or the statement against the present cec and see, present cc is a constitutional position holder person how and why the supreme court has the authority to comment anything negative about the cc number 1 number 2 the justice joseph has clearly said that we want you know a system which can take action against the elected prime minister of india how ridiculous let me tell you i am very clear about that Get this is not ones. you know a uh, 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 clear uh, statement this is this is not uh, this is uh, bad in law why why uh, uh, justice hello hello what did the response yeah please continue complete your point complete your point yeah so yeah so so justice joseph has said that we want a election commission which is which can take action against the elected prime minister if it is required see the supreme court and the judiciary has the power to evaluate the uh, flaws in election laws election petitions provisions are there if the flaws are there then the uh, indira gandhi lost the election uh, uh, petition uh, in 1975 and i will i will just quote you know the present chief, chief justice of india uh, yeah. mr chandrachud's father see see he 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 quoted he, i am quoting him his statement just a minute give me one one second he, his his statement was see see uh, very very important observation of justice chandra yb chandur father of uh, uh, the present chief justice in indira gandhi ne, uh, nehru gandhi's versus uh, raj narayan case justice chandur observed no constitution can survive without a consensus adherence Uh, correct, to its correct. fine checks and balances just as courts ought to not to enter into problems intervened in the political thicket parliament must also respect no, the is, preservance of the yeah. courts see so this is the direct intervention and direct interference interference of the executive Mr. i am sorry so Karthik, so Karthik so if if, if maximum the court court should have no no just a minute maximum the court should have done that they should have given an advisory to the the central government or the executive that this process should be followed and yeah. the law should be enacted no i 